It's Friday, so we're back again, and tonight we're going to discuss what makes a gold trap and what makes gold trap out, more importantly. Why does gold trap where it does? So I'm Prospector Jess, SourdoughMiner.com, HuntingForGold.com, and I'm here to help you find more gold. So the other thing I wanted to bring up is tonight's sponsorship is the Gold Prospectors Collection five DVDs that explain the things I've been talking about for the last week or so. And uh, specifically this topic for tonight comes from the last DVD called 4x or 4x gold hunting. One of the topics in there is the topic of gold traps. And I'm just taking a little snippet of what's in there and I'll explain it in brief to give you an idea of the kind of thing that you need to be on the lookout for because it will help you find more gold. And uh, so tonight we're going to talk about gold traps. So what makes gold trap out? Okay, and right here we're looking at a really serene kind of situation and a prospect that I haunt a lot. And you know, it's looks really really cool. And uh, and by the way, that those those grasses grow ticks too, like crazy. <laughs> so you have to be very careful to do a tick check. And to do your deet thing because you know in this kind of area there's a lot of gold there's also a lot of critters so um you, you can't help but go through a section like this and you'll come out and think oh i don't have any ticks and then look and you you'll probably have a dozen you know you just won't know it they kind of go in quick so we're not about ticks we're about traps and not mouse traps but gold traps now what do i mean by that well what i mean is a place where gold can hide out in a strong flow so for example a giant flow but before we talk about giant flows let me double check make sure our audio is going good because we're already well into the topic <laughs> so for tonight we're looking at gold traps and we're also looking at our hunting for gold page you can also find out by subscribing to prospector jess that's that guy down there prospector jess channel on youtube and I just rebroadcast a handful of the ones we did. I'm behind like uh, a dozen already, uh, but I'm catching up. I'm actually starting from where we are right now and going backwards uh, because I just couldn't get caught up from two weeks ago or a month ago, actually. So right now we are on the page and uh, ever wonder why gold traps out the way it does. There we are. So welcome, everybody. Hey, it's a weekend. What are you doing this holiday weekend? Uh, Vic says that Vic Ta says the sound and video is great. Awesome. That's great. And Charles Hansen, everything is good. Nice picture. Uh, David Perry is checking in from Tennessee. Awesome. Paul is here from uh, Oklahoma. He says it's flooding like crazy. And you guys have gotten that tornado city all through the Midwest. And, and you know, that's just unbelievable. Uh, take care, guys. Keep safe. So let's uh, turn the volume down here and we'll go for it so tonight we're going to talk about a very important little topic it could be big too but a topic that's important and is a key tip to where you can start looking for gold right off the bat if you spot one of these now what we're talking about specifically are the kinds of objects and projections that might disturb water flow in such a way when it's in high flow that it actually will deposit gold preferentially in certain positions relative to that object. The key is the object itself cannot move in high flow. Let me show you what I mean. You suppose anything could resist that? Probably not a whole lot. But yet if you look closely enough, you'll see there's a handful of objects. One is this ridge line here with a waterfall going over it. Two is if you look right in here, you'll see there's a there's a fixed rock structure of some sort. Also, if you look in here closely as you watch one of these washing machines agitate, you're likely to find that down in here where you see some of these these kind of shapes that are protruding, they too have boulders that are stuck underneath them. And so you want to be looking for those kinds of things in high flow. Now in low flow, what does that kind of stuff look like? Now over in here, where we have all this turbulent water, can't really say. You know, it could it could have a trap behind it. 
if there's a big boulder that makes it rise up like that. But on the other hand, if it's rising up simply because it comes over this so fast and then decides to do a little curlicle loop de loop as part of its standing wave, there may not be anything trapped out there because it's got scrubbed clean. But that's a different story. Tonight we're just going to talk about physical gold traps. So let's take a look at that scene we started with. Let's go to a larger scene. So in here, right off the bat, we can spy uh, something that looks of interest to us. And that is this rock, this big boulder right here. And now the normal water flow in this area, I know it like the back of my hand, goes something like this and through the bushes down over that way. And so uh, one of the things you're going to be looking for when you go into an area like this is you're going to look for tracers of the water flow and direction. How strong was it? And what direction did it go? Now, one of the ways is when a when a bunch of sticks and twigs go downstream, they can tend to collect and they will start forming a little horseshoe around a branch that's protruding up, somewhat like what you see right here. Let me change colors just to make things interesting right now. So right in here, this stuff. You notice there's a bunch of twigs and things right across here and they're sort of collected around in kind of a horseshoe and that would indicate that the water flow was this high and it was in this direction that tells me a bunch about what i'm looking at with respect to the gold trap that's here i'm going to erase this because getting kind of messy so remember we've got this horseshoe of crud hanging around this big branch that's stuck out of the stream and it generally points to me you know that it's going downstream now i'm drawing it like there's an arrow here what i mean by this is there's a bunch of twigs and stuff that have formed kind of bird's nest backwards. The bird's nest points downstream. It's it actually it points upstream, but the hooks point downstream. The the shoe tips, if you will, it's a horseshoe. And so what you're looking for is okay. This stuff trapped out on the front edge of this big tree. That means the stream flow was this high. And this trap right here, this gold trap would have formed a nice eddy behind it right in here. And that, my friends, is your first experience with a gold trap. So what you're gonna be looking for is a place just behind the boulder, start there, somewhere in this region right here. But as I pointed out in that first picture, we'll go back to it in a second. Remember that place that had the big swollen water flow, it kind of bumped up and went over? Well, that's going to happen with this because anytime water flow goes over something like this, you get into a situation where the water flow will tend to go like this, it tend to go down and then drop and pick up speed and then it'll pile up and then slow down and then it'll pick up speed again and go on downstream. And so what's going to happen here is right in here, right, I'm going to draw it in the yellow color that's appropriate for gold. Right in here is a secondary location that I would check out somewhere about three feet or so, depending upon how strong the flow is. In this area, I know the flow was, was how high? It was this high relative to the boulder. And so I know that that's a fair amount of water moving down there. And I can kind of guesstimate that it's going to swell up down in here. So three to six feet back behind the boulder, I'm going to look for what we call a standing wave. It's not really an eddy. It's a place where water flows speeds up and then as it spreads out it slows down remember we talked about that before so as it slows it piles up and immediately drops the gold right there even though there's no trap nearby and so essentially right down under here in the creek bed i should be looking to check to see if there are cobbles and boulders collected there too that may not have gotten because this may go over this this slope so fast right here that it scrubs everything out immediately behind the boulder but what it's going to do is deposit it just downstream. So keep that in mind. There can be more than one place you're looking. So if there's nothing found behind the boulder, that doesn't mean the boulder didn't trap gold. It could mean that the boulder's flow was such that dynamically the gold got pushed further downstream, but still trapped near the boulder. And so that's your first big tip on gold traps and looking for that. Like I said before, I mentioned that because it's in the Gold Prospectors DVD collection in that four by gold hunting. There's a discussion of traps and there's also a discussion of this kind of flow. So, um, so that's kind of it for uh, what we do with this kind of gold trap. 
Now, like I said before, if we go back to the front page there and look, again, not front page, this middle page, and we look at this flow, you can easily see that kind of condition I was talking about. And, and so I wanted to point that out again, where the water is coming off of this slope. You can see it accelerate fast and then boom, it starts to build up here and it's going to turn around a little bit and then kind of go downstream. But as it swells up and turns around right here, this area in here is slower moving than this area right here. And so the X is where you don't want to look. This guy right here is where you want to look, the circle. And that's because that's where it's starting to slow down again. What I can't say is I don't know what's underneath this area here. So unless I could see or had a picture of it before the flood, I wouldn't know whether or not this makes a good trap or not. Because if it's all polished, then it's also got a problem where even in turbulence and then having that eddy, it still is going to shoot on downstream eventually. It's going to get bumped on through. So that's kind of the topic for tonight is what makes gold trap out. And any questions you have on gold traps or experiences, comment below. Please let me know. Uh, Adam Bond, uh, what's up, Jess? Following prospectors. All right, fellow prospectors. I need some, I need my glasses there. Doesn't that make me look studious or something? Well, makes me look like I visited Walmart. <laughs> which I did. You know, one of the things I need these, I actually need prescription glasses, but not so much. So I'm sort of in this, I can see almost, but close up, not so good. And what I found was I was getting these really fancy prescription glasses with multiple you know, levels. And I realized, wait a minute, these nice $5 Walmarts do just fine. And I can take them prospecting and lose them. And I don't care. <laughs> so um, that's another tip for tonight. Still flooding, Scotty says. Working on the edges, any advice? So, uh, let's see. Any advice would be to take pictures. Uh, that's a good question. So, let's take a look at this picture. In flood, one of the things I do is if I get a flooding zone, don't go near the water. It's too dangerous. You, you slip and you're gone. You'll go downstream faster than a rock, and that's, that's a problem. But on the other hand, you can stay in an area where you can get a good view of the stream flow through your region where your claim is. These photographs like this and video are invaluable to determine these gold traps. So go in there when you can, when it's in flood, and spot where the mud's stirring, where the sticks and rocks are building up, where the stuff is kind of stalling out like this zone right here. And, and essentially get photographs of that and then get from the same position photographs when the river has dropped. Now you have a map. Pretty cool, huh? And that map will tell you where the traps are. It will also tell you where the eddies and high flows were. It'll also tell you, what did I tell you earlier? This flow right here is speeding up. We talked about that with sluice box earlier this week. When the flow speeds up, what happens to the fine gold? When the slows, when this, uh, when this water flow slows down, what happens to the the coarse gold? It drops first. What happens if it slows down even more? Coarser gold. I mean, you know, finer gold, but not the not the finest. Okay. What does it take to drop flower gold? A very, very stagnant pool, something that's an eddy that looks more like this kind of situation or, well, let me put it, uh, this kind of situation where we have this great big pond out back here and it's kind of all settled out. Now, if that were off the side of what you saw in that previous picture, I would suspect that area of collecting potential flower gold. If you have a lot of fines in the region you're working, that's a great area to start working. That's another type of gold trap for fine gold. Fine gold requires very slow, still water to settle, and it won't settle to the flood, you know, abates, or if there's a zone like a slough or something off to the side where the water's always settled, then what happens as the flood gold goes by, some of it kind of gets caught in the little tiny currents over there and it has a chance to settle down and boom fills in the muds and guess what you get there you get a pay streak of flower gold hey the old timers used to do that all the time they'd fill up their vials with just the finest stuff gold dust and so that's the idea here just you're looking for the different velocity profiles in the FUD so that's what I would do there okay Scotty good question by the way great question 
Victor says, I have dozens of $5 glasses. <laughs> yes. And let's see. Uh, Lewis Meyer says, I got your prospect. Awesome. And Idaho, Scotty is there. So he was just talking about the flooding and so forth. Uh, so I think we're good. And I think we've got what we want for tonight. I just wanted to check in and talk to you about what makes gold trap out and what makes a gold trap. Why does this stuff take place? And again, we go back to the, if you know why on something, then you know what to do in cases where there is a change, where the properties differ. You also know what to do in cases like, like uh, this one, where there's a whole, you know, one picture is worth 10,000 gold spots, okay? Gold traps. Because there's all kinds of, there's a, a sluicing effect going on here. There's a gold trapping effect going on here. There's there's tremendous water velocity changes going on here. It's super dynamic and super changeable. But having a picture and thinking about the gold moves with speed. Gold moves with speed. Where is it slowing down first? That's where the gold will trap out. And that's tonight's discussion. Gold traps. Prospector Jess over and out. And good to see you. And have a great weekend. This is going to be a lot of fun, guys. Catch you then. And like I said, don't forget to check out the uh, Gold Prospectors DVD collection, the GPC offer at sourdoughminer.com slash GPC. Just read it. It's, it's an, you know, the offer's there. It describes what's in the box. So I'll catch you then. Good night. Good prospecting. Over now.